Hello, and welcome back to chapter 13, a statement of cash flows. All right, so I dropped a bit of a, a hint or a secret or whatever it was at the end of last video saying that it wasn't actually examinable for you to prepare the statement of cash flow. So then why the heck am I spending an entire video telling you how to prepare the operating, investing, and uh, financing sections? Well, that is because if you know how the building is built, then when I kind of point to an area of the building and say, what does this mean? You will be able to explain what does this mean? Uh, you will have the building blocks to get you there and then it will make more sense. So while I, I <laughs> how do I say this kindly? Um, while I understand sometimes professors are like, okay, this isn't on the test. <clears throat> and then basically you're like, well, then why the heck do I need to like watch the rest of it? Trust me, this is, um, you know, while it isn't on the test that you'll have to, you know, get a bunch of transactions and create your own statement of cash flow, you'll need to tell me what the heck, um, you know, having a, uh, you know, what the heck this number means in relation um, to the business. And so if you can do it forwards, um, if you don't understand it forwards, you'll be able to understand it backwards. And that is the rationale here. All right, so in this video, we will be looking at preparing uh, the operating, investing, financing, and therefore wrapping up the statement of cash flow. So our step one, operating activities. I mentioned in the last video that you will have um, the direct and indirect methods. I'm gonna skip ahead just a second and then come back. So the indirect method is where we have net income, and then we remove all of the non-cash items and what is left is all of our cash items. Our direct method, while it is a perfectly reasonable method, uh, it is often not used in business because it's like you're counting receipts, essentially. Um, you're getting more good information this way. It's quicker. It's just the one that most companies tend to use. Both are available to use under uh, IFRS and most other uh, accounting uh, frameworks. However, um, it's just this one, the direct method is not used um, very often and therefore not examinable. So when we ask you a question, um, it will be in this format, the indirect method. All right, going backwards just to go forwards. Uh, so you will want to start off with net income. Yeah, grab it from the income statement. That's where net income lives. And you plop it down at the beginning of your statement of uh, cash flows, your operating activities. And then you um, add back all non-cash items. So you add or remove, pardon me. So if you have a, oh, I'll show you in a moment. Um, but effectively, um, it is easier to prepare relative to the direct method. It reveals less information um, to competitors. Uh, and I think you'll be able to see that once we kind of get into it. All right. So without further ado, um, we add in all non-cash expenses. So we're doing the opposite. So we start with net income and then effectively we're trying to un undo, sure, undo all of the non-cash items. So we add back all the, all the minuses and we minus all the adds. Um, so what that looks like is we add back all of the non-cash expenses. So we go through our net income and we're like, hey, great, depreciation, that's non-cash. Losses, that's non-cash. And what's a, helpful way to say, hey, is this cash or non-cash, is we look at what is our journal entry. So this would have been depreciation expense, and this would have been credit um, accumulated depreciation. Do you see cash in the debit or credit? No, therefore it is non-cash. All right, that's the, the tricky one there. And so we go through and we do all that. We add back all of our non-cash expenses. We subtract all of our non-cash gains. And then we move on to our balance sheet and we are like, cool. We look at our current assets and we look at our current liabilities. And so if we have a decrease in our current assets account, meaning we went from say current assets only had accounts receivable in it. And we went from a hundred um, at the beginning or at the end of last period to 80 at the um, end of this period, that's a decrease of 20. 
So then um, that would be a decrease of 20 in our accounts receivable, which is the only thing in our current assets. We would need to add that back because effectively, if we went from 100 to 80, that means that we net net collected $20 uh, in cash. So we net net collected 20 more dollars in cash um, throughout the term. So we're going to add the decrease in current assets. We are also, okay, so this is where it gets a little tricky. So we add the decreases in current assets. We minus the increase in current assets. So if instead we went from 80 accounts receivable to uh, 100, that means that we actually got less cash net net this term and we need to minus that. And then we do the opposite of each of these for our current uh, liabilities. So if we have an increase in current liability count, that actually means that we increase the amount of cash available by not paying that cash. Again, this is weird. So my little hack for when I was a student was I got really good at the assets. And then I just did the opposite for the liabilities because a secret between you and I, liabilities most times are just negative assets. Let that sink in. All right. So let's look at an example. Uh, it is time um, for you to prepare the operating activity section of the statement of cash flow using the indirect method. And then so you'll receive the statement of um, the income statement and the balance sheet, as well as some other little bits of information. So I'd love for you to pause this video and give this a try. If this is really hard, good. Um, you know, don't struggle through too, too long um, if you're really stuck, but do give it a little bit of a struggle, give it an attempt, and then when you come back, we will do this together. Talk soon. All right, so let us make a little more space here. All right, so we're going to put up our statement of cash flow, and we're going to focus on um, the operating activities section and we are going to first focus on net income as our starting point <coughs> excuse me all right and so this was our twenty-one thousand. all right no marks for pretty but we need to oh there's bambi saying hello hello everybody all right so now we are going to go through and we are going to first do our um non-cash investments uh, <laughs> non-cash adjustments. All right, so move that back a little bit, move that back a little bit. Cool, let's do that right here. Let's move that over. Mm. Okay, let's see, will this make it nice and pretty? Okay, well, okay, Not net income. So let's now do our adjustments. And so we have our depreciation expense, because I went through and I was like, what do we have here? Don't know about you, don't know about you, don't know about you, don't know about. And then I'm like, mm, I don't know. But we were told we have operating expenses um, to include depreciation of 11,000 and a loss of 5,000. So we know that right away we can take our depreciation expense and add it back. And then we have the, uh, loss on disposal of equipment cool cool um and then that would be the five thousand that we add back five thousand that we add back all right so i don't know any other items on here because um we just don't know um in interest expense was it a debit interest expense credit cash or was it an interest debit uh, interest expense, credit, um, uh, interest payable. We don't know. So the only information that we have was our net income and our um, items from the information here. Okay, cool. We also see the bank loan was received and passed to finance and purchase the equipment. So we know that we're going to ignore the bank loan. Great. Let's move on to the current assets and let us take a look here. So we have a decrease in accounts um, 
receivable. So we went from 12,000 to 17,000. So we have a decrease in AR. And because we had a decrease in AR, that means that we gained cash because that means that net on net, um, that we collected more money than our accounts receivable received. So we're gonna reflect that back here. All right, so now we have inventory and we went from 4,500 to 5,900. So that means that we had a, an increase in inventory, which means um, that we had an increase in inventory and that's, we're gonna do the opposite. Oh my gosh, invent, inventory. We had the opposite of a decrease. So that means that since in, inventory increased, we have net cash um, that went out the door. So that is going to be a decrease of 1400. Okay. And so next we have our prepaid expenses and our prepaid expenses went from 2,500 to 3,000. So same thing, an increase in prepaids is going to be a uh, decrease to our cash flows from operations of that $500. All right. Now we go to accounts payable. So if we went from 2,500 to 3,750, um, that means that instead of paying the accounts payable, uh, we kept the cash. So an increase here is actually going to be uh, an increase to our uh, cash here. So an increased AP is going to be 1,250 here. All right, and income tax payable. Remember, we didn't know the information. What happened with income tax expense? What happened with interest expense? We don't know, but now we know. So we have income tax payable and it went from 800 to 1200. So that means we have an increase to income tax payable. And that means that we get to add it back here. And same thing, increase, why aren't you typing? Okay, increase to prop tax payable. And that is gonna be an increase here because instead of paying out the cash, they just decided to finance it. So we got to save the cash and it increases. Now bank loan payable, current portion, we don't touch it because that was um, received to finance and purchase equipment. So long-term, so this would end up being part of our financing activities. <coughs> so again, um, for presentation purposes, per uh, accounting rules, we need to put the current portion of the bank loan um, as part of our current assets. You'll see um, why in the next chapter that will make a difference when looking at ratio analysis. However, for our purposes of our operating, financing, or investing portion of our cash flows, this goes to what it actually financed. And here it went to finance equipment. So it would be part of our financing activities. All right, so now we add these all up. And we see that we have one more add. Yes, that we have net cash provided by operations of forty-two thousand seven hundred and fifty. All right. So, if you know how to create this, then by me saying hey, um, how much, what would I say, for example, um, did your balance of income taxes uh, increase or decrease this year? You'd be like, oh, it increased. So I could give you um, ending balance 800, you could see this 400, and you would be able to tell me what the balance is for income tax payable at the beginning or at the end of the current year. So if you can build it, you can uh, do in reverse. And so congratulations. Uh, you're you know, many steps closer to understanding just what the heck the information is that's coming from this cash flow statement, which is pretty darn valuable. All right, so continuing on, let's take a look at the next section, which is investing activities. Here is where we look at the cash flows that relate to our non-current assets account, typically our long-term investments, <coughs> excuse me, um, and our 
items like property, plants, and equipment. These don't have um, different, I guess, indirect or direct items. We look at them all directly. What are the cash generated? What are the cash used? And this is what it looks like. We're like, cool, you bought a building minus cash. Cool, you sold a building, uh, proceeds, generated cash. What's the net of all of these items? That is the cash used by investing. Hey, did you have any no significant non-cash items? Let's note this, 15,000. People, I don't love how this 15,000 is right under this 236. This should be like, oops, this should be like not, because it implies that we're gonna add this to this, we're not. This 15,000 doesn't get added to anything. It is merely um, information, and it's important information. It's saying, hey, listen, um, part of that land that we bought um, was issued um, by issuing common shares. So 110,000 land, 95 cash, 15 shares, hence the 110. All right, so similarly, when we look at financing activities, we look at um, the changes to uh, long-term notes and the current portion of notes if they're not really to operating activities. Loans, bonds, did we uh, issue any shares? Did we, um, did we repurchase any shares? And um, that will go into financing. So sometimes students want to put profit in financing. No, 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 no. Profit is what we did this year. That's an operating activity. So we don't look at profit here. This is how are we financing our company, debt and equity. So um, similar to what we look at in our investing activity, our financing looks at, great, where did we have sources of cash? Increase. Did we repay some of those um, uh, financing items? Great, decrease. Um, we issued, we received com uh, money from common shares. Oh, we paid out dividends, minus. And then again, noting any of um, the, non, the significant non-cash um, items here. All right, so at the end of the day, we put these all together. We are like, thank you so much. What is our net increase or decrease to cash? Um, we add it to our beginning balance of cash, and that equals our ending balance. And so making sure that our ending balance agrees, which means equals, uh, to the ending cash on our balance sheet. Of course, disclosures are important. What are the significant non-cash disclosures? And we get to our, oh, I'm sorry about this. We get to our end, and I say sorry because it's, I just don't love how it's not on one page. Uh, we get to our final goal, which is our statement of cash flows, where we see our operating activities, what we just did in the first part of this video. And then we get, of course, slightly different numbers, our investing activities, our financing activities, that gives us our net uh, increase in cash. If this is a negative number, we would say net decrease. Our opening cash and those two equal our ending cash on our balance sheet. And when we know, we know, and we celebrate, yay, it matches. All right, so I, if I gave you the statement of cash flow, you should be able to tell me um, you know, what was the most, um, what was the biggest cash outlay for this company uh, during this term? And so you'd look at investing and uh, the largest cash outlay was for the purchase of the building for 120,000. Um, what was one of the largest sources of cash? Well, you look at the addition to the mortgage payable and then you double back and just make sure, oh, Largest source of cash was actually net cash provided by operating activities, although the largest source of cash from financing was 124,000 from additions to the mortgage payable. But the largest source of cash was, hey, your operations, which to me indicates pretty healthy, um, pretty healthy company right now. So pretty cool. All right. So the last part of this is, um, how do I say this? Whenever possible, we look to real companies. And if we are able, however, I'm being careful here, um, we look to real companies because effectively that's what you'll be doing in real life. You'll be working in a company, you'll be analyzing a company, and you'll be looking at these uh, financial statements. 
Although, as you may have um, seen, or maybe not yet, um, these, while it looks complicated, this statement right here, uh, real statements are messy. So I'm going to pull up a real cash flow statement right now. All right, so this is Loblaw, and this is their Q3 of 2020 financial statements. And so these are going to be condensed, consolidated statements, which means that they're going to have multiple weeks. These are their qu quarterly. They not only have their year to date, so their nine months or 40 weeks um, for 2021, um, but also for 2022. And then they have their uh, most recent quarter, which is, um, or mo most recent in 2022 compared to the uh, quarter immediately preceding. So they have their current and then their, um, their last year's comparable to kind of allow people to see, hey, are they generating more revenue this year versus last? So let's take a look at their statement of cash flow here. And if you are able to utilize real financial statements, then by the time we get to the exam, uh, it will be a lot less, a lot less tricky. So again, this is uh, for the quarter and this is um, year to date. This is um, last year's for the quarter same quarter, and this is last year's year to date. So my question for you is, um, does Loblaw use the direct or indirect method? Which section uh, is their largest source of cash for the current quarter? Which section is their largest use of cash for the current quarter? And tell me some information that you think is interesting. So. Uh, give you a few minutes, pause the video, and when you come back, uh, let me know what you think. All right, so if they start off with net earnings, that means they're using the indirect method of cash flow statement. So uh, Loblaw uses the indirect method uh, for their uh, statement of cash flow. Which section is their largest source of cash? All right, so we got um, 1.5 billion. I always I'm like, uh, it's like almost 1500 million. So 1.5 billion from their operating activities. Um, sources, sources, sources. Okay. Uh, so that's their largest, that's their biggest positive. That's their only positive. Uh, it is their cash flow from operating activities. They made almost 1.5 billion uh, Q3 of 2022 um, from their operating activities. All right. And then which section is their largest use of cash? Well, they had 921 million, um, or 0.9 billion, 921 million um, in investing, and they had 636 uh, from financing. So they invested um, was their largest section. And even within here, what was their largest one? Fixed assets purchased, all right, um, for 303, um, million, 300 million uh, dollars worth of investments there. Okay. And then the last question, review the current quarter and tell me something you think is interesting. All right. So what in here is interesting? I think there's many things that are interesting in here. Um, I think that, you know, even the fact that they used five um, million dollars to uh, in foreign exchange uh, so essentially five million dollars of uh, foreign exchange lost um, for their for their cash use is interesting I think the fact that they are both paying back debt um, and or um, and or you know issuing items to their shareholders, at a rate less than what they're investing is interesting. So it's almost like they're poised for high growth and they're being able to fund that future growth with current operations at uh, net-net, which is interesting. Uh, I think it's really interesting how they have leases um, and that they paid um, their shareholders $270 million in dividends last year. I think it's really interesting how they um, had some I 
or just all of it, um, uh, how they had some impairments uh, to their assets. So when they were like, oh crap, like we didn't depreciate well enough or we had like some item happen uh, that actually caused us to impair our, our uh, fixed assets by 6 million. I think that's interesting. I think uh, it's interesting that they had net earnings of 575,000. Uh, that's like bottom line. Um, and yet they were still able to generate cash flow uh, from operating activities of 1.5 billion. So it, it's just really interesting um, how this company is uh, coming together. So you can find out a lot of information. Um, you know, last year uh, around this time that they had a large acquisition that had an outlay of um, $800 million and that perhaps, um, you know, this year is helping them move their operating activities uh, cash flow from uh, $1.3 to $1.5 million, billion, pardon me. Boof. So lots of things that we can find um, interesting in here, looking at what, what do these numbers mean? And they're all usages, usage, uses or, um, or sources of cash. All right, thank you very much uh, for your attention in this video, and I will see you in the next one very shortly.